Talking about music is like dancing about architecture. Sometimes there is no scientific, accurate way to describe what you're going for. Like every art form, music is an embodiment of the artist's inner world, a way to tell a story. Even though the story may be an old one, how he chooses to give shape to this tale can change how we perceive the subject, or it can give us a new, more intimate perspective from the character's eyes. In the film industry, there's a golden rule, show, don't tell. Directors, actors, filmmakers in general try to show feelings, a background story with less dialogue to better connect the audience to the story. The same goes for music. What movies have are the actor's expressions, specific camera movements, lenses, scene props. Maybe not in a direct way, but music also has such elements, the defining ingredients for the purpose of great storytelling, the song's harmony, melody, form, tempo, the variety of instruments used, and of course, the lyrics. The general opinion for writing a song is you create the music first, and space the lyrics to overlap the melody and the rhythm and vice versa. But when a piece of music is constructed that way, it lacks one of the fundamental necessities of music, the harmony. I might have a title or I might have an idea or I might have a few little phrases jotted down, a few words, nice images, and I'll start to find the music that connects with those words. And then once I've got some music and a melody, then I'll write a little bit more of the words that fits the music. Then I'll write a bit more of the music. Then I'll so the two are kind of gradually edging. To create a true design, the workflow has to be natural for the audience to embrace the end result on a personal level. Meaning, we need to see the melody, rhythm, instruments, lines, and the lyrics in a corresponding relationship. One should complement the other to give the ultimate form to the story. In my humble opinion, a perfect example to this ideology is a song called Drive Home by Stephen Wilson. In this song, the themes are memory, time and remembering. The story is of a man losing his memory after a terrible car accident in which his wife dies, leaving him traumatized. Searching and looking for her, he spends years. As he sinks deeper into his self-created abyss, his beliefs towards the certainty of the accident fade until he is in a cycle of constant denial. This is a hauntingly beautiful story, but how does one tell such a story on a non-fiction level? There are many ways to come up with this challenge. Wilson could have given a narrated feeling, as if an outsider was telling the story, or the main character could have written some sort of autobiography to reveal his lost memory. When done beautifully, all of these storytelling ideas might be perfect. But personally, I like how Wilson came up with the structure of the story, and showed the subtle but sublime communication between the characters the best. Before we are introduced to the setting, we are familiarized with the thematic melody for the accident. With the start of the lyrics, we hear a description of the scenery, a cold window pane, an upturned car in the rain, and yet the style of the lyrics doesn't feel like a narration, but more like a piece of dialogue or monologue in some kind of remembrance. The lyrics continue as don't try to bear the blame, deal with the pain, dust down your wings again. I didn't recognize it at first, but after many listenings, 
I was able to figure out what I was feeling towards these sentences. Wilson had created two characters within one in the song. The present self, giving affirmations and comforting sentiments, but at the same time trying to emphasize with the character. He tries to tell him that the reality is now and he should forgive the past. He continues on with a pause without end, and he too questions how could she leave? But he keeps on pushing the mentality of cleansing himself from the guilt and the grief, and he drives himself to give up the pain. At the other end of the conversation, we have a small guitar part rising in between the lyrics. He tries to speak out, but is suppressed by the ever-emphasizing, seemingly caring advices. He is the remains of an unerasable memory, returning, surfacing again, to fully deal with the pain of his trauma one last time. One outburst to bring back all that is lost. And yet, as the memory of the accident begins to take shape, the guitar also begins to rise, and when the confrontation reaches its peak, it bursts, and he retells his story, even referring, in a cry, to the inapplicable advices that tell him to drive home with one of the most sincere guitar solos of our time through the fingertips of Gottfried Goldberg.